Wood Falls, population just 1,200, has the best brass band in the South, 22 times champions of Wessex and winners of several national trophies. Mind you, playing at the pub would have been frowned upon by the founding fathers of Wood Falls. The band was formed in the Methodist Chapel as the South of England Temperance Band. A mile down the road, the village of Downton also has a brass band, and the rivalry between the two is intense. Downton is bigger, prettier and famous. Sir Walter Raleigh, Lord Nelson and George IV all lived in the village. In days gone by, the Downton band were in no way competitive, playing only in the community and strictly for fun, leaving the trophy hunting to their neighbours. Woodfall's band was uh, they were started first, but they were a temperance lot, you see, whereas the Downton chaps was a all a very boozy lot. And uh, when they in, in years and years ago they used to play down through the village, and of course there was five pubs in the village and all the landlords gave them a, <laughs> a pint of beer. And I heard my dad say by the time they got to the White Horse, which was the fourth pub, they couldn't recognise the notes, you know, so they had to play by ear. <laughs> <laughs> but the Downton band of the 1990s is changing its image. They too are becoming seriously competitive. This year, for the first time, both the Downton and Woodfalls bands have qualified for the big blow, the prestigious West of England Championships. The history of brass bands is rooted in the north, with names like Black Dyke and Grimethorpe. When it started in the early 19th century, it was totally northern and working class. But today, there are nearly 2,000 brass bands spread right across the country. The tradition at Wood Falls goes back to 1874. The band was founded by John Green, and there have been Greens ever since. Great-grandson Keith Green has been in the band for 30 years, and now his 11-year-old daughter Kelly is following the family tradition. I think, in a couple of words, it's my life. That's all there is to it. I love the music, I love the friendship, I love the, you know, the competition, I love everything about it, you know, it's just, um, oh, I'm, I'm quite proud, I don't believe I've missed a single engagement since 1977, and that was the day after my father had died, and he would have been very, very, very annoyed if he'd, if, if I'd, if he'd known that I'd missed a band engagement for him, you know, and I'm quite proud of that. I think, probably. You know, not only that, but that's been a big chunk um, towards it, you know. Both my wives have been understanding to a certain degree, but when it comes down, like, occasionally we've had to maybe rehearse four or five nights on the trot, you know, and when there should have been maybe things that I should have been, in, other things I should have been involved in, family things, where I said, no, I'll have to be re re rehearsed on that side, you know. These Wiltshire youngsters are not only keen, they're really good. Just listen. There's some lovely memories. Somewhere in our archives there is a tape of the junior band, as we were then in 1959, rehearsing. Tradition runs deep in the brass band world. Even at Woodfalls, there's only one woman in the band, Trish Chislett, the principal horn player. I started playing just before I was six. My mother had to go down to the local band and nag the bandmaster to let me join because he thought I was too young. But 27 years later, I'm still playing. 
Having a young family, um, there's lots of times you end up having to take the children with you. Um, you have to put off things like parties and weddings and things to go to contests, and that can cause tremendous stress on a marriage. But the rewards are great. The contest is now only days away, and just down the road, the Downton Band too is using every opportunity to rehearse. The Moot, an Anglo-Saxon amphitheatre, is the ideal setting for a concert. Downton's new conductor, Ian Lowes, is a professional musician. I came to brass banding quite late. I came from the orchestral musical world, the classical world, and I expected the brass bands to be a stereotype, but I've found quite the opposite. I've found people from all walks of life, doctors of psychology, accountants, bricklayers, plumbers, teachers, the whole of life, really, seems to be interested in brass banding. Although the band was formed a century ago, it's only recently that Downton had become competitive. Having achieved higher standards, there now burns the ambition to beat Wood Falls. I've been with this band for uh, over a year, and one of the, the things that was put to me at first was that uh, there is such a rivalry that they want to beat Wood Falls. That is more important than winning. That is winning. <laughs> perhaps even more than that, better than ever we were. But they're not really part of the village, just such, not in a way. I mean, we played at all the church fates, chapel fates, the local Jim Canna took part in tug of war and that. And I heard them say that uh, the band went to Amesbury once, and they came back with three cups. Not one of them was for playing. Uh, one was for the best dressed band, one was for the best on the march, and was, one was for winning the tug of war. <laughs> They once had a very posh set of uniform with all the gold bars all across. And one of the local wits, he was heard to remark after they'd been playing, well, it's a pretty plumage, but they can't whistle. <laughs> the local input is, is fairly small in terms of, of membership, inevitably, because uh, you, as soon as your standard gets higher, you're looking for a, a level of playing which couldn't be obtained by a small community. As soon as they can get a new bandsman from outside, they bring him in and it doesn't matter about who was playing before, if he's a bit better, he takes the place. And this does lead to a bit of uh, ill feeling now and then, I think. No split notes and those triplets, if you listen to the horn, da 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 it goes in with that. Woodfalls have always been a fiercely competitive band. Contesting and adding to their already full trophy cupboard is at the top of their agenda. The Woodfalls conductor, Peter Wise, is an army musician by background, and he's in bullish mood for the final rehearsal before Saturday's championship. The test piece, Eric Ball's tone poem, Journey into Freedom, is quite a challenge. My job is to conduct this band and to rehearse it, and to train it, to win. Winning it or coming second is the key that unlocks the door to the national finals at the Albert Hall. And of course, this brings us into competition with uh, all the bands from Wales, England, and Scotland. So this is the springboard to winning the uh, national championship. Okay. I personally enjoy contesting, and it brings the best out in bandsmen. I mean, people have gone along to contest with their arm in plaster, after accidents, they try their best to be there so that they don't let the rest stand. That's a great team effort. 
The band has been rehearsing intensively for six weeks, four hours at a time during the last few days. All this on top of full-time jobs. We store and distribute mountains of animal feedstuffs throughout the south of England. Very dusty, dirty old job. In fact, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think the two things I look forward to is having a shower and um, blowing the trombone. For two hours, you just completely switch off. You're in another world. It's like a lot of things. You've got to have a hobby outside of your work. They both marry together. But well, it's like a happy family to me, or a happy marriage. Fairly dangerous job, a noisy job, and at the end of the day, all I want to do is just get home and go to my band and just relax, you know, and I find that the band is the greatest relaxer, you know, you could possibly have. I think it's the best band we've presented for Bristol in recent years, don't you? Very few weaknesses. Maybe a 5% chance of improvement. <coughs> On the eve of the contest, the Woodfalls band has its last team talk. The only thing I know is that every day when we go to work, we got to go in through Downton. And I won't go that way if they beat us. <laughs> <laughs> I shan't go through Downton on my way to work. I should, I should travel 50 miles the other way. I think I, could, I can tolerate all the others beating us, but I think for, for Downton to beat us would be the hardest thing to take. Yeah. When we're competing against bands like Sun Life, with enormous sponsorship checks, and we, we go out playing carols at Christmas trying to raise money uh, to finance the band, we have to make do with second-hand instruments and rely on Tony to deliver our percussion in the horse box. Mm. You know, that's the kind of battle which we've got to do year in, year out to survive. That Woodfalls has sustained a band for nearly 120 years is down to the youngsters of the village. Ron Bly, a player for over 25 years, is now conductor of the junior band. The original story of the founding of the band was uh, that 14 young men from the village decided to form a band. And I think the, the influence by the young people has always, always been prominent. Uh, there have been several junior bands formed over the years. Each time, it's been when the band seems to be on its way out, it's suddenly reformed by junior members. Competition day, and for the bands, it's their cup final. And all roads lead to Bristol. bands in the section and we will be looking to certainly be within that first five bands. How conscious are you going to be of the, ne the next door village of Downs and your great rivals? Not very conscious of them at all. We'll probably see them in the dressing room and that's as far as it goes really. Um, not wishing to uh, be nasty to Downton but we don't think of them as being in the first five or six bands. What have you got there? Well, we've all got equal responsibility, really. I mean, that's the whole idea of a band, you know. You all play together. I mean, if they're tightly together as a team, then they're, they're going to play together well. I mean, if there's a bit of friction in among the team, then it's bound to come out in the playing to a certain extent. It's a great adrenaline boost to be up there and have to get it right once. I mean, it's a one-shot attempt, and it's got to be perfect. 
doesn't always come off that way, but when it does, it's a, it's a real buzz. What's that? Colston Hall, Bristol, and 450 musicians arrive for the West of England Championships. 18 bands playing the same composition, one after the other. The draw is crucial. Band number seven, Downton. A middle to high number is considered favourable. Oh, no. <laughs> is drawn number one. And number one is the worst draw of all. Can you all gather round, please? Right, you've probably all realised that it's a very lively acoustic in there. We definitely don't want to be accused of overblowing. Keep it well within our bounds, as it were. Make a good sound. Be very precise about the articulation, because it responds well to that, that sort of acoustic. Don't let it splash around. Immediately before going on stage, each bandsman has to sign on and prove his identity. Oh, Mr Chisler, hello. Hiya. In the old days, it was not unknown for some star musicians to play for more than one band. Meanwhile, all eyes are on the little white hut, home for the next six hours for the adjudicator, Dennis Masters. He can't see the bands, he just has a number. And when he's ready for the next, he blows his whistle. In that box, you've got utter concentration. There's nothing going on around you, and all you do is listen. So there's one advantage about it, being locked away. There's no distractions whatsoever. It must be inconvenient at some time. Well, yes. <laughs> they look after you that way, too. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly the time goes. Uh, you get in there, you're doing your job, you're listening, and if one's busy, of course, time does go quicker. same instrumentation and yet each band can actually produce a different sound, different style, different dynamics, different interpretation. So the, the piece is actually different and as an adjudicator one listens to that difference and uh, bases the uh, adjudication on the musicality of the piece. dressing room, it's Woodfall's turn to get the jitters. Red Hot favourites to win are the Sun Life Band from Bristol. player Martin Portman weighs up Woodfall's chances. Working at the piece for such a long time, it gives you the determination that after all that work, you're not going to let yourselves down at the last moment. You know, you've worked at it for weeks and weeks and weeks, done sectional rehearsals, one thing or another, and you are going to do it as well as you can. And all the other bands have all done the same thing, and therefore they're all just as determined as we are. He's going up on the stage. Last year I had uh, what two doctors thought was a minor stroke just before the national qualifiers. Um, I couldn't speak, I was paralyzed down one side. Um, and I was still disorientated by the time we got to Bristol, but I played. I've been here eight or nine times in the last 10 years, so you get used to the routine after a while. It gets worse when you actually walk on the stage, sit down, look round, surrounded by people. That's the moment.
Nervous moments for everyone as they await the result. Has all that work been worthwhile? West of England regional champions, the band that played number 11, Flowers. Flowers Band of Gloucester first. Sun Life the favourites, only second. But what of our bands? Uh, we actually finished last, 18th, which is a bit of a shock for the band. Um, but it's just one of those things I've got to accept. We were looking to maybe be in the first eight or nine, you know. They're all bandsmen, they know that, uh, that results can be good and can be bad. This is just one of those that's really atrocious as far as the band is concerned, probably the worst um, that they've had ever. And probably the best they've ever played as far as they're concerned. Right. Is it my round or your round? My round. You sure? Yeah. And Woodfalls are drowning their sorrows too. Tenth place doesn't please their conductor, Peter Wise. Very disappointing. Exceptional. You know, I thought the band was worth far better marks than that. And of course, it's one man's opinion. And on today, his opinion that, of us that we were tenth, and we just accept that, and on we go. We've got another contest in four weeks, and the boys will play as well as they can. They gave me 100% plus today. <laughs> Next week's music makers are 120 youngsters from a Chichester junior school who recently won the title Sainsbury Choir of the Year. <laughs> and beautiful homes hiding down low through roads. One of the villages boasts a brass band, which is well over a hundred years old, and which has won prizes in this country and in Europe. It's the Woodfalls Band, whose longest serving member and flugelhorn player is Ron Bly. The band was formed in 1874, that's 113 years. And at that time, it was a very small village. In fact, probably only a hundred or so people around here. Small country hamlet. and. Uh, that was the only form of entertainment. I joined the band in 1955 as a, a young boy and uh, I've been connected with it ever since, 32 years. It's a way of life, I think.